Welcome to Geek Squad Installs. Today, we're going to show you how to install an amp. According to the Geek Squad AutoTech Fit Guide at every Best Buy store, we'll be using the following parts power wire with fuse, same gauge ground wire, remote turn on wire, speaker wire, one set of RCA cables, and various connectors. We'll also be using a Kicker L7 8-inch subwoofer and speaker adapters to convert the factory OEM plug into standard speaker connections. Let's review the tools that we're going to need for this project. Before we begin, always do a brief inspection of the electrical system to verify what is working. Note anything that isn't working before beginning to work on the vehicle. Also, make sure to perform an external vehicle inspection and document any scratches, bug marks, or rock chips you find. To begin, Let's identify where the battery is under the hood. Next, remove the cover from the battery terminals. Make sure to use a fender cover to protect the paint job on the vehicle when working under the hood. Next, let's identify where on the firewall we can run a wire through to the interior. Make sure to check inside the vehicle to see where the wires will run as well. Once you've verified where the wires go in and come out, use the grommet tool from the interior to push a hole through the rubber grommet. At this point, you need to remove the fuse from the power wire to avoid short circuits, blown fuses, or electrical shocks while installing. Next, locate under the hood where the grommet tool has poked through, and feed the cable through the hollow tube into the interior of the car. Our next step is to connect the power cable to the battery. Remove the nut from the battery connection, and connect the amp power cable. Next, tighten the nut to secure the power wire into place. Cable management is important, so make sure to position the power wire where it won't be in the way, and zip tie it in place. Once we've replaced the battery cover, we're ready to begin work inside the vehicle. Run the power wire inside the vehicle in a way that it doesn't get tangled with the pedals, steering wheel, or any other moving parts. Your best bet? Run the wire where the factory installed wires already run. It's probably in a safe location. Next, secure the wires with the zip tie to keep them in place, and use flush cuts to cut the loose ends. At this point, we'll start running the wires to the back of the vehicle. Most of the panels will pop up, but if you feel there's a risk of breaking it, try tucking the wire underneath the lip. Most panels are held in place by clips, and will pop off if you use the proper panel popping tool. Once the panel is removed and the cable is in place, replace the panel and make sure to snap it firmly back into place. We'll need to access rear side panels to install the amp, so let's prep the rear of the vehicle by removing any flooring. Make sure to plan your wire run out carefully, keeping it out of sight and in safe areas, like under the seat mount. When running wires through loose areas, it's a good idea to cover them in split loom to protect the wire from pinching. Next, let's tape the remote wire to the RCA cables, connecting them every foot or so. Since the remote wire is not a high current wire, it should not affect the signal cable in most situations. Based on the disassembly instructions, this dash should pop right off, so we use our plastic removal tool, insert it in the corners, and pop it. Doing so will release the clips, allowing the entire dash to come right off. Now it's time to remove the old radio. Since this radio is held in by four 7mm bolts, we'll remove the screws using a 7mm nut driver. 
Make sure to do this by hand to avoid breaking components with an overpowered drill. Next, we'll pull the radio out. Removing the side panel for the dash assembly on the passenger side, fish the RCA cables up through the dash and radio cavity, leaving a little slack for ease of connection. Apply split loom to the wires to protect it from catching or getting cut on sharp metal edges in the cavity. To hook up the remote wire to the radio, first strip the ends of the remote wire and the remote turn-on wire on the harness. Use the crimper tool to add suitable connectors to each end and connect the two wires together. Since we are installing a subwoofer, make sure to install the RCA cables into the subwoofer output on the radio, if it has one. Once you've verified all connections are made and that none of the existing connections have come undone, you can reinsert the radio back into the dash. Making sure the mounting holes line up, slide the screws into place and tighten them by hand. You may find that the factory screws won't be long enough after using spacers on the mounting harness, so you may need longer ones to complete this step. Make sure to use a hand tool to avoid over-tightening or breaking anything at this step. Now it's time to put the dash back on. Being careful not to pinch or get caught on any wires, click the dash back into place. Tuck the RCA cables under the carpet along the edge, running it around the door side of the passenger seat. Apply the tuck method as necessary, and remove panels when the risk of breaking them is low. Since we're installing the amplifier behind the rear quarter panel, first remove the seat belt bolt, next remove the rear trim guard, and then use the panel tool to pop the clips and remove the panel itself. Now we're in the home stretch. Bringing the two bundles of wires together, let's neatly zip tie them together and then run them towards the exposed rear quarter panel cavity. The amplifier we're installing today is a class D amplifier, which runs cooler, so it's safe to install behind the rear quarter panel. This would not be a good place to install a class A or B amp, as they run hotter and need plenty of air circulation to remain cool. Make sure the screws are not long enough to penetrate to the exterior of the vehicle, and then attach the amplifier using two of the included screws. Avoid tightening down the amplifier until you are sure the cables fit properly. Once this is done, attach the remaining screws, and then tighten all four, making sure to avoid damaging the cables in the process. Next, trim and strip the power wire about 3 quarters of an inch, twist the strands a bit, and insert them into the amp. Tighten the connection using an Allen wrench, and trim the split loom covering to fit the cable. Repeat the same process for the remote wire and then strip and attach the ground wire to the amplifier. Attach the ground wire to the auto body using a drill, making sure to use star washers for extra grip. Use the rough side of the star washer facing towards the auto body for better cling and connection. Now, let's connect the speaker wires to the amp. Make sure to strip and twist the speaker wires before inserting them into the amplifier and tightening. Split loom the speaker wires for additional protection and safety, and secure the speaker wire to the power wire with zip ties for a professional look that doesn't interfere with movement. Now comes the subwoofer. Strip and twist the speaker wires before inserting them into the subwoofer. done? Great! Now we're ready to test and tune the amp. Before we test the sound, we need to go back under the hood and install the fuse into the power cable, snapping the cover into place. 
Now let's tune this amp. The best way to tune an amp is with an oscilloscope. Now if you don't have one, turn the volume up all the way on the deck until your speaker is distorted. Back the volume off a bit. Turn the gain on the amp all the way up until the subwoofer distorts, and then back it off a bit as well. Done? Fantastic! Let's put everything back together. Reassemble the panel, making sure to snap it back into place. Next, reinsert the floor components, reattach the trim panel, and reattach the seatbelt. Once the floor is back in place, thread the subwoofer cable into position, making sure to have adequate slack in the cable for movement. Once complete, go back through your vehicle checklist again to make sure everything is functioning as it was before. Thanks for watching this episode of Geek Squad Installs. We hope you've enjoyed our walkthrough of an amp and subwoofer install in this 2007 Ford Edge. If you've watched this and feel inspired, try it yourself. If you need help, check out our other install videos, visit GeekSquad.com, or schedule an appointment with a Geek Squad Auto Tech at a Best Buy store near you.